There's no music, bud. Oh, wah, wah. Every, oh no, we're gonna have to cut it out a little song. bit. Oh uh, yeah, it's a sad, sad Tuesday. It's the fourth and one podcast. Fancy trash dancing next to is always Captain Boring. Live from Linnets in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's about how I'm feeling about watching the semifinals that happened on um, Saturday. It was what day that of the week that was. Um, obviously, this is powered by you guys. It said powered by Riverside. That's not true. We're powered by you guys. Anchor.fm slash fourth and one. Um, obviously, most everybody listens to know what happened. Michigan can't quite keep up with TCU after J.J. McCarthy throws two pick sixes. Ohio State apparently needs to recruit a kicker who just absolutely misses one to send Georgia. So we got a Horn Frog and Bulldogs National Championship. And... You know, I'm now more interested, to be honest, in you in the Premier League than I am actually in um, <laughs> in the outcome of college football, or for that matter, really the NFL. But I don't know, Makai, you were pretty upset. You, you, we kind of gave up on Michigan halfway through. So, what are you? Well, feeling? I just don't understand why Michigan didn't play their brand of football. Like, I get it that TCU was loading the box and they were getting passing opportunities, and that's all fine and dandy. But when you when your first play is a run right up the middle for 55 yards, and then you go dink, dunk, right down, and it's fourth and goal on the two, all year you have either kicked the field goal or handed it to... Now, granted, Blake Corm wasn't in. Handed it to your running back, whoever that is, and go get the two yards or the yard and a half, whatever it was. I would have kicked the field goal, but if you're going to go for it, then go, then do your identity. Let the running back run behind that back-to-back offensive line of the year. Don't try to pull some Philly special because then TCU's it. TCU, I felt like, said to themselves, oh, they're going to play our brand of football. Well, then that's great because we're better at it. They weren't consistent with the run. Now, granted, some of that was because they were down so quickly. And then J.J. McCarthy's got to be better. And and he knows that. And next year, he's got to be a whole lot better because he can't throw two pick sixes. One, okay, I'll give you credit, but you cannot throw that second one um, uh, for a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was watching the game, and... I kind of saw an offensive line that kind of didn't know what it was doing. And I don't mean that from a play call perspective, but, like, this was the first time they saw a spread defense, which is funny because overall, besides the two pick sixes, J.J. McCarthy had a really good game. Um, But the offensive line, I don't know if they just weren't expect. I guess they're used to being able to – what's the word I'm looking for? They're used – Imposing their will. Yeah, imposing their will, determining what the line of scrimmage is going to look like. And it kind of looked like they didn't necessarily know what that was going to be. So I I think that kind of came back to bite them in the end. You know, as for TCU, um, they're going to get destroyed by Georgia because their secondary looked bad against a not-too-great Michigan wide receiver core. Obviously... Um, I think Georgia's going to be a little bit more prepared for um, je ne sais quoi, a, a more Max prepared Duggan. for a, dif- a different type. Max Duggan and a different type of, of uh, I was saying Georgia's offense line is going to be more prepared for oh, a different sure. defensive look because there's a couple more schemes that you're seeing in the SEC than you're going to be seeing in the Big well, Ten. Well, and and Georgia is the reigning national championship. This was a wake-up call to Georgia uh, uh, because, really, they should have lost to Ohio State. Every team wins a game during the course of 
the year that they probably should have lost. Michigan sure. won the Illinois game, right? Uh, the TCU game, TCU probably should have lost. They won that. And then, uh, and then Ohio State probably should have beaten Georgia. If it wasn't for their historically good kicker, program historic good kicker, uh, missing a field goal late, they would have uh, knocked him off, and then it would have been Ohio State TCU. Either way, I think it's fascinating because TCU's not going to go away. They're not going to blink at Georgia. They, they've they now I, – I think the country was looking at Michigan and Georgia on the same wave, wavelength. Yeah, I – we're kind of going to the national championship game – because I'm going to leave Ohio State where they're at. I feel like Ohio State did everything they needed to in order to win. CJ Stroud was the last play. Uh, helped his compared, draft stock a lot. Compared to Caleb Williams? Yeah. Much better. Um again, he sh- probably should have He probably should have. Sorry, I hear wind. I'm assuming that's in your house. Oh, uh, that's my water softener. I do apologize. No, you're good. Just making sure I wasn't, nothing was blowing up behind me. Um, No, uh, CJ Stroud did definitely help his draft stock. But coming into the national championship, obviously TCU has kind of been the underdog for all of their thing. I don't think they're going to win. I think they're going to put up a fight. And I think that's about it. I think that's kind of we're going to see like a 45, 35, or 28 sort of deal yeah, where it looks is, closer than it actually is. The line is Georgia 12 and a half. I would take TCU plus the points there. Yeah. I, I, I think TCU is good enough to at least keep it within 10. Yeah, you know? I think it's going to be a kind of a 10 point game. They obviously have good, solid athletes that need to be where they are, right? You, you, don't, you don't play college football in Texas and don't have athletes. I think. You know, to me, that's about all I need to preview. I think, again, it's going to be Stetson Bennett raising the trophy again. Uh, I think what I'm taking away from this weekend as far as the semi playoff, the semi, the semi, semis go is uh, Caleb Williams definitely was the high, not Caleb Williams, C.J. Stout was the Heisman winner for me. You and I said on Saturday, if he didn't lose the Michigan game, he would have won the Heisman. So seeing him play really four quarters showed the difference. Second of all, Oh my gosh! You probably have uh, Mar- is it Marvin Williams Jr. Who is the Mario? Wi- Wait for who? No, for Ohio State. Oh, the junior. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison. Sorry, um, Simeon's bad with names. I need a button there. Um, <laughs> he is. If he continues going at the rate at which he is going, you are looking at another. Hall of Fame, best of the best, yeah, ca- caliber, yeah, talent. The the game changed when he got knocked out of it. Which Ohio State mm. fans, it was not targeting. It was to the it was to the side, the shoulder. Yes, he was defenseless, but it wasn't forcible contact to head or neck area. So, um, it, but the game totally flipped. Yeah, it, you're absolutely right. I think Marvin Harrison is the next. A great wide NFL wide receiver that you can book because he has the Hall of Fame dad, so he has the work ethic there, and the talent and the body control is off the chart. It reminds me a lot of prime Julio Jones, how Julio Jones would make these awesome just catches on the sideline. That, that's know, Marvin it, Harrison Jr. I, I was thinking probably, I was thinking Randy Moss. I was honestly going to that level He's not of as talent. fast as Randy Moss, though. Sure, but today's thing, like, the perfect wide receiver that I feel like NFL teams are looking for is not the Tyreek Hill and the Jalen Waddles. It's the Calvin Johnson. That's what you're looking for in the wide receiver. You're looking for a big target who has still 4-4 four, four speed. Right, four, but, I don't think, speed. but I don't think he's that fast. That's what I mean, mean, it doesn't matter. He could be running a 4-7. They won't care. He's going to catch the ball if you throw it to him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he's an elite level he talent. He better than – listen, I looked well, at, I looked if at the he can highlights. Put up this, if he can put up the same numbers he did this year, next year, with a new quarterback and a new play caller, as Ryan Day said that he's going to give up play calling next year, then he I, – I, I think that that will solidify <laughs> just how great he's going to be. That's Ryan Day needing 
more coaches. That's what Ryan Day is trying to attract an offensive coordinator. Nothing against Ryan Day. I think he called a fine game. Um, I think he called I, the game of his life. I mean, he called the game good enough to win. They should, again, oh, yeah. Ohio State should have won that game yeah. on Saturday against Georgia. So more takeaways for me. Um, Max Duggan is probably going to be a good backup quarterback. Um, another really good defensive guy. Uh, sorry, wide receiver in, I'm forgetting his name. Quinton Where's, Johnston. Quinston Johnston. No, Quinton. 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 Johnston. 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 Okay, There cool. you go. Bingo. He has cool hair. Yeah. That's all I know. And he's a captain. And he wears one or 11? Uh, number one. Number one. Anyway, yeah. another good, very, very good wide receiver prospect. Again, probably needs a little bit more developed in, in a few things. Uh, here and there. Um, He's an Michi- AJ This Brown. is the thing. So, first of all, uh, Big 12, not as bad as we thought they were. They're not mm-hmm. still not out of the doghouse yet, but they can still apparently develop talent if Sonny, Sonny Dykes deserves what he got, if he can somehow get a national championship. <laughs> Go Frogs, it, I it, guess. It, it, <laughs> it might be the greatest season in college football. They were 201 just to make the playoff. Yeah. They were unranked halfway through the season, and now here we are with a fighter's chance against Georgia because everyone, if you're TCU, you got a chance against everyone because it's just been yeah. happening for you all well, year. Th- this is the thing is defenses in the Big 12 are not as bad as they used to be. <laughs> no, I, I think defenses around the country aren't as good as they used to be. Well, that also helps. I think the talent has been distributed, and I also think because we're such an football has turned into uh, such an offensive-minded game that defenses hasn't caught up yet. It's a pendulum, right? Right now we're in the swing upwards. We're about to fall backwards into a more defensive. It's just going to be the way that it is. Um, so good on the Big Twelve. Good on something. The takeaway here's the one thought that I had for Michigan. This is the issue that I'm having. Let's just look here real quick at what the college football landscape looks like. Right, the, the final, the final standings. Uh, I need to find it. Hold on, college. Where is the? This looks really, really bad on me. They'll, they'll come out with the final up. standings after the national championship. Uh, like well, the AP. S- yeah, I should still have some sort of. I don't think they do it this top week. twenty-five. No, but they, I should have the last top twenty-five. Oh, let me look at the last top. The last, last. Let's see. Uh, it's Georgia, Michigan, TCU, Ohio State, Alabama, Tennessee, Clemson, Utah, Kansas State, and USC are the top ten. Okay, so first of all. I'm going to put a pin in USC. I want to come back to them. Okay. So let's look at this. Penn State, uh, congratulations. We're obviously going to come back to them as well. Beat Utah. Great yep. look for Penn State, given given what they needed. Uh, I think here's the funny thing is is uh, my – my in-laws said that because Ohio State and Michigan lost, it made the Big Ten look bad. I don't agree with that because if Manchester City somehow loses in the Champions League, and I know we're talking soccer, I'm sorry, we're not going to say, oh, the Premier League sucks. We're going to say Manchester City sucked that day. Um, yeah, I, so, again, bo- both Michigan and Ohio State should have won their games on Saturday. And, I, and, I think everyone feels that. And, and given a Penn State, who two lost teams, both lost one, that means you have three, play, in my opinion, you now have three playoff caliber teams. Yeah. And all Penn As State is missing is an X factor. <clears throat> Get rid of James Franklin. And, well, they'll fix the issue. So I just want to show this. So we have a TCU, Sonny Dyke. Second year head coach next year. They're gonna have. Yep. A, they're gonna. They're just gonna. They're gonna. End, they're gonna lose one I, game I, somewhere or something like that. Well, they're replacing Max Duggan, who's a yeah. four year starter. So they have that sort of thing. You have Ohio State, who always reloads. Yeah, has talents on the outside. Always has defensive talent. Really, 100%. they have that one guy who went off. Okay, yep. Alabama question mark, but tends to be able to reload. Nick Saban knows what he's doing. 
this could be an end of the era. It could not be. It depends what next season looks I, like. I think we'll, they get back to running the football, and uh, I think they'll be okay. We'll, we'll know what next season looks like. Yep. Tennessee, to, to be honest, I think that's a flash in the pan. I think they're going to be in SEC contention, but I don't think they're going to be as explosive as next year. Bear with me. I'm going to get to a point, okay? Utah, same exact case as Tennessee. Putting the pin in USC. Clemson, same place as Alabama. Could go either way. I think they they could. They ended their season in the right direction. Here's the issue that I'm having. First of all, Tulane. We'll come back to them. Apparently, the Americans not done being good and being able to beat up teams. Yeah, to yeah. Me, that, Tula- that, that, that Tulane was USC imp- game reminded that was me a lot awesome. of Boise State Oklahoma in 2012. Sure, that's what that reminded me a lot of. UCLA. Once they move over to the Big Ten. Watch out. Notre Dame clearly doesn't suck. South clearly Carolina doesn't <laughs> suck. I told you at the beginning of the year, I was yeah, like... I, I was just, wrong. Listen, I was wrong. It's okay. I was wrong. Okay. South Carolina, I get that they ended at 8-5. and five. They had a bunch, of t- a bunch of games that were one score. LSU, again... Made it to the SEC championship game. Made it game. to the SEC so championship what's your point? game. Get to your point. Here's my point that I'm getting to. Texas, bringing in Arch Manning and yeah. has Quinn Ewer. Uh huh. Kansas, bringing back a very good offensive talent. Yeah. Long story. Uh huh. Very long. I think Michigan missed their window. Oh yeah. No, you're not. Normally, these teams, again, outside of the run Clemson and Bama had where they made like four straight, and Bama's made six of seven national title games, most of these programs have a two-year window. Like, they'll get there one year, and then the next year, they're not. Listen, this is going to come down to the right arm of J.J. McCarthy and his development. If J.J. McCarthy comes out next year, and controls this offense, but uh, leads it forward. Like, yeah, the running game will still get you 200 yards a game, but J.J. McCarthy's really the captain of this train now instead of the running game being captain of this train. I don't think Michigan misses their window because their defense is always going to be good. Even under Brady Hoke, their defense was actually really good. Okay, their defense is going to be good. They got re- they're going to reload on the outside. I'm sure some people will be back, and they got Donovan Edwards, and they're going to have a big offensive line. But you're absolutely right. Michigan 100% may have just missed their window, and I've been thinking it, and I think a lot of Michigan fans have, but then again, we thought that their window was closed after beating Ohio State last year. We We never thought we'd be back here. And you also have to remember, Simeon, the playoff expands to 12 in two years. So even if he misses it next year because of a one loss, Ohio State comes into Ann Arbor and beats you, right? And it's a one loss because other things work out. USC actually wins the Pac-12 championship this year. Then you go to 12. Then your window's wide back open because if you, as long as you're in it, you're in it to win it, right? Anything yeah. can happen. Yeah. So, but no, I agree with you. 100%. <laughs> I think that was the biggest question I took away from this weekend is, right, Michigan had everything lined up. And I'm not saying, hey, listen, they're not going to – they can't repeat next year. Obviously, I just said that Clemson and Alabama can turn it around, right? Michigan can do it too. I think J.J. McCarthy has the possibility to be – not a generational talent, but an Aaron Rodgers type franchise talent. Yeah, he, very. He and he didn't back down. He got down. He was still confident, and he yeah. just kept swinging. I mean, two pick sixes. That's a fourteen point win. That's yeah. a two score win mm-hmm. in the opposite direction. Yep. So, yeah, I, I, and w- yeah. one trick play. That's a three score win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll like. It, uh, you made the comment to me on Saturday when the game was over. If Michigan did this, if Michigan did that, like, I mean, I guess that's how every football game goes. But it, it's very rare that a when you get done with the football game, you can point to two, two, three plays, depending, and be like, if Michigan would have just not done that, the the game's over, right? And it, and it's over for a long time. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll have to see how college football plays 
plays out next year because who knows? Maybe Ohio State's new quarterback after C.J. Stroud, maybe he sucks. Maybe Michigan just sleepwalks through the Big Ten again. Maybe they fall flat on their face. Maybe Jim Harbaugh takes the Denver's Denver Broncos coaching job, which I don't be, see. That would be I, dumb for him. Yeah. Like, I, and I, I don't, don't mean from, it. like, if you're going to take an NFL job, it's not the Denver Broncos. No. <laughs> Do you take the Indianapolis Colts? Like, that would be at least. I would at least rather you take. Pick, at least you can pick your quarterback, right? <laughs> the Indianapolis Colts, to me, much better organization. Yeah. To go, to go build. But, it, but it's the richest owner owns the Broncos, richest owner in NFL history. Yeah, so, because they just got sold recently. Well, no, I understand that. But he could walk in to Harbaugh and go, I'll pay you $15 million a year to come coach the Denver Broncos. Yeah, I'm not saying he won't. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, let me say this. We're taking money out of it. They're both paying equally. Oh, then Which, he stays at Michigan. Like, I don't see I, – I was telling Robert this. I don't see how he leaves. Well, Michigan's think, been smart with NIL and smart with the transfer portal, and recruiting's basically on autopilot. Minnesota was the answer. Yeah, because he did not go to Minnesota. I don't think he's going to take. You had a team that was missing a coach. Yeah, that's all you. Literally, they were set. Justin Jefferson destroyed every fantasy game that he was in the last six weeks. Yeah, because he put up quarterback numbers. Because all Kirk Cousins did was where's J- where's Justin Jefferson and threw the ball to him. If you don't go for the Vikings, you're not going to go for another job, in my opinion. I I would I would hope not. I don't the, see I don't best, see who I could see leaving is Ryan Cole. Day. I could see Ryan Day leaving. Sure, I don't. I, I, the issue is the money. Is about equal at this point. And but on game day, they were saying that NFL jobs might actually be more attractive because NIL and the transfer portal aren't regulated yet. And so you're basically like like you're basically in a hailstorm in college where in NFL, yes, you have to deal with all that stuff, but it's all regulated See, and monitored. I, I hate to do this again. No, you I'm don't. I'm bringing up soccer. <laughs> you never hate to bring up soccer. Now what? It's the same effing thing. What is? All this is is transfers. No, I understand But instead that, of but paying not... $45 million to Barcelona, you're paying, you're paying Chuck's used car sales $2 million so he can give the money to your favorite wide yes, receiver ev- who's upset that he got a new coach. Yes, everyone I think gets that it's the 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 process of it is it's is easier. simple to it's easy to understand. But <laughs> to it's me, still ne- it still needs to be regulated for go, these coaches. Who do you want me to go buy? I'll go uh, give me 1% of but everybody you should, I bring in and I'll go get you a a 99 overall team. But Watch. But, you, but but it shouldn't People shouldn't be able to go to people like you and be like, go get me this guy, right? It should be – there should be some sort of punishment. If you transfer, then you can't get your NIL. Like kids don't need to transfer for the money. Makai, the the sooner you realize that in about – if it's going – if they do not put restrictions on it in the next two years, maybe year and a half, the sooner you realize that the NCAA will just be a bunch of – football clubs and will be a lower division with a lot more fans for the NFL. 100% get that, and I agree, but I I think that they will. They almost have no option. No, because here's the deal. I think people are realizing, we're going to get into this apparently, I think people are realizing college isn't the answer that it used to be. The colleges don't necessarily, they like the money, but the issue is all of a sudden they're turning into athletics and all th- you want to bring Uncle Sam down on you. Best way is to start do you started doing one thing and now you're doing another and you didn't report it. So all of a sudden, what if Uncle Sam decides to? <laughs> I want the extra money. Y'all are running profits. You either need to cut out what you're doing, or I'm starting to tax all of you guys because they're all running as non nonprofit entities. So what they're doing is they're just spending the money internally as much as they can. Eventually, someone's going to do something stupid, get greedy, or the government's going to step in, 
and then and then what happens? Really, is the question. I don't feel like going no, but, going but with that, this but, hypothetical but, off the but, top of my head. But but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is they need to get control of this now before that happens. It, if they don't, you're 100 percent correct. But if they don't. You're going to see colleges going towards – this was my point, sorry. Colleges going saying we're going to take athletics out of the equation. We're going We're going to have two things. We're going to have a for-profit athletics department, and we're going to have a non-profit university department, and they can, they'll talk and they'll figure out the way that they do legal things because there's people smarter than I am. But that's the end of the story, and that's the end of the era. In my opinion, I think that's where we're headed to, towards. So, so, so you don't think that we're going to get any regulation on that, and that's what's going to happen? They have happening. to do it within the next year and a half. Or that's I, 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 I agree, but I want you to put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. Do you think in, in the next two years that that's what's going to happen? It has to be within the, at max the next year and a no, half. No, no, no. You're no, gonna, no, no, no. Let me, Not I, will, I will answer the question. Okay. I will All answer right. the question. Yep. It has – first of all, it has to be within the next year and a half. You're going to see all the transfers happen. One or two people are going to get – are going to complain, and then they're going to regulate it. Or if they don't, but they're going to – I think they're going to regulate it. I'm with you. I think they're going to – you have to. It doesn't make sense so, to leave it unregulated. So, so, are you, are, so are you talking July of 2025 then? You said in the next 18 months. That's July 2025. That's so, right. That's right when Texas and Oklahoma leave for the SEC. So that's actually does I it happen or real, no? I bring up a yes because Texas, Alabama, UCLA, I, I, and USC I, leave. What? To your point, the NCAA is encouraging coaches when they when they know another coach or another team is doing something to report it. Someone, a Nick Saban. A Jimbo Fisher, a Jim Harbaugh, uh, one of these big time coaches that is in the media is going to piss some other coach off. And as soon as that happens, and as soon as it's, oh, well, Jimbo literally called my guy yesterday and offered him $2 million, then Jimbo comes out and names the next one, and then it all goes rolls downhill. We're, we're looking at an SMU situation in the 1980s, 1970s. When they yeah. lost their program for sure. a year, yeah, that's what's going to happen. We're going to realize, oh crap, it's probably going to be Texas again, guys. Let's not lie. It's either going to be Texas or a- a- my Alabama. On, my money's on A and M. My money is on A and M. Our money's on A and M. A and M's one in one hundred. They're lead one in six. They're leading the betting right now. In who's going to get busted for violations? <laughs> it's A and M. Everybody, it's A and M. It's not Harvard. After after Harvard and the and the Ivy League, A and M has the largest endowment. They're the largest school in the country. No, no but they'll be A and I feel like A and M will be the first one to name names. Speaking no, of A and M, you're, you're basically nailed. wearing A and uh, San. I, I am funny. I think A and M's the first one to get nailed. So so, but if they get nailed, then I think they start naming names as well. So well, of I, course, so so it, it, we're both correct. It's just going to be A and self interest. Yeah, yeah, self-interest. And, and A&M already did it pissing Immediately off. Immediately blames Bama. <laughs> yeah, Pisses, he pissed off Saban. They're going to point figures. Then somehow Dion's going to get tied up into this. Oh, Nebraska's yeah. going to end up. It's going to end up being like Warren Buffett paid so-and-so. He would never do that. But Warren Buffett paid some really famous rich person paid some – small school and they turned it around and someone did an investigation and the FBI is going to unnecessarily get involved and someone's going to go to jail, but not really. And then someone's going to lose like all their scholarships. Well, it, well, what if it's Colorado? So Colorado hired Dion. I don't know if we covered this on the podcast, Colorado hired Dion and technically don't have the money to pay him. This I missed. Yeah. Colorado hired Deion Sanders. The details of the co- contract came out. The problem is because they have to pay the coach that they just fired his buyout, they don't have the money to pay Deion Sanders his yearly salary. But when the AD was asked about that, he said, I quote, I'm not worried about it. So here's the deal. Colorado also, this is starting to smell, but also Dion's too smart, I think, to realize, to 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 back himself into something awkward. 
Sure. I, and he just comes across as the type of guy who's a little bit too smart, who pays his lawyers enough money to make sure he doesn't get pinched. Yeah. Sort of deal. You also have to remember that Colorado, after Dion got hired, Colorado said, we're not changing our academic standards because the issue they were having with transfers was none of their credits would transfer. Right. Anything. Correct. They no, said, no. we're not changing our academic standards in order to land more in order to land more uh, people, in order to land more transfers. Dion gets hired, guess who changes their academic standards? Yeah. I mean, yeah. within a week, they changed their academic standards. Well, so and, and, it's they, clear it, and they sold out all their home games in in like an hour If or I something? had to guess, Dion has a percentage deal. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, would, he could. I would bet that Dion says, listen, we're going to say I'm going to grow your – program within a net X amount, I'm going to get 5% of however I grow your program. And that's how you're going to pay me the first two years. And then everything after that is 10 million a year after that, because that's what the F I'm doing. It's an unregulated sport, professional sport, semi-professional. It's an unregulated, the kids are getting paid now. It's professional. No, no, no. No, I understand that the kids are getting paid, but the kids still cannot I mean, I, I guess technically, yes, it's professional based on since they're getting paid for it, but but also they're not get, as good as get, NFL. You're not getting a W two, so technically it's not professional. You're also not getting a 1099, so technically it's not professional. But like, you're you're basically just go start signing I, I, dudes what, from the N, uh, NFL. With, we are okay. L- let me run this by you. We're yeah. ten. I'm gonna say we're ten years away from from there being no longer NCAA being involved, and the conferences have linked together to to form the college football playoff. Right? That that that's mm-hmm. what this brand mm-hmm. is called, mm-hmm. and they link together with the NFL, so they start sharing replays and they share refs, and and it's basically the G League of the NFL. I don't necessarily think so, but something similar because we have the XFL and the USFL involved. But but college football is just way bigger than that. The the issue is depending on how successful those other two leagues are is what the NCAA does. Because if the NCAA wanted to rule the world, of, of football, they could, the NCAA could put the NFL out of business if they wanted to. Oh, I don't think so. I don't agree with that at all. You have... If you put yeah, a college no, no, game on Sunday and an NFL game on Sunday, even if it is Colts and Texans, you put that on Sunday. I mean, M- Michigan, Ohio State, yeah, so like, the, the, deal. like the big the brands. They, go, they do the thing that of what I said that they were going to do. You split... And you start poaching guys. You have the money for it. You start poaching guys. All of a sudden, Patrick Mahomes is playing for Texas Tech again. <laughs> Throw into some 16 and 26 year old, and the Texas Tech Red Raiders are taking on the Orlando. There, no, the Orlando there, Archers. No. No, there's no way because the NFL rule It's is, coming and no, everyone's going to hate it but the and NCAA, they're going to rule the world and then an asteroid's going to hit us and we're all going to die. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> <That's> they, not, <laughs> it's going to happen. The NCAA no. is going to take over and we will start suckling it, the teeth no. of of what's his face it, in Indianapolis. No that, no, that would be really awesome, but that is the most farthest fetched thing you've ever seen. Listen, said on this I podcast. already have I've already sold the idea to Netflix. I'm sorry. I already have. We got a six. We got a six. Who's the director? Deal. Who, who's the Me. director? <laughs> you're gonna direct it, so it's gonna be awful. No, but yet you're uh, gonna, but yet you're gonna win to an be, Oscar. This needs to be. It's a sports. Uh, Aaron Sorkin. We're gonna make it Aaron Sorkin. Oh well, everyone would watch that. Yeah, Aaron, yeah. Aaron, Aaron Sorkin's pretty good. He hasn't done a really a sports thing yet. He did Sports Night, but that's not the same. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, that was oh let's uh, let's <laughs> now that we've done we've got the three like we both are like oh yeah we're kind of done let's, okay let's yeah, jump sure, over to the other games that happened okay back um, on track I get that was hey, a twenty Iowa minute scored diversion more than fourteen points uh yeah their I, their defense had two touchdowns I think ah that's why so yeah. their defense scored more yes. than fourteen points. yes uh they beat 
Kentucky. Of, Kentucky. I almost said Kansas. That's hilarious. Um, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Speaking of Kansas, Kansas State. Uh, I I have taken. I didn't watch either of these games. I take it that. Uh, it that like, the Sugar Bowl was not close as close as the score leads it to believe. Well, if you turned it on about midway through the second quarter, mm-hmm. everyone you would have been like, "Oh, Kansas State's actually playing better than Alabama, being in Alabama." Mm. And then they had a four, and then Bama had a fourth and goal stop, and then went uh, like seven plays in fifty-two seconds and scored a touchdown, got the ball back after half. Touchdown, interception, touchdown, and then they were up three scores and the game was over. So it, it really happened in Kansas State played bad for about two and a half quarters and then remembered how to play good again. So a lot closer I, than the score indicated. I didn't watch any of the games on Monday. Um, I was cleaning my okay. house all day Monday. Yep. Um, uh, so well, or, Miss, or Mississippi, Miss, Mississippi State did what Mississippi State, we thought, would beat Illinois, and Illinois was without... Hey. There's another Simeon. He ran for 68 yards. Hey, there you go. There you Simeon go. Simeon Price. Let's um, see. Simeon Price. Two, uh, USC ha- blew a 14-point lead with like five minutes to go to USC. Lincoln <laughs> Riley becomes the first FBS head coach to lose five games or something like that, being up. 14 in the final seven minutes we're, of the we're game. We're going to get to that in a second because I actually okay. watched the highlights of that game. I wanted to wrap up all the other ones. All right, well, is- I'll move on. Uh, Purdue just was outmatched by LSU. And finally, Penn State had a good kind of big boy win, ran the ball, played great defense. However, Cameron Rising went out midway through the second quarter, I think. Of that of the Rose Bowl, and so really, then Utah just couldn't pass the game or pass the ball at all. So that is wraps up Monday's national championship. Are we going to do that at the end? Preview that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of go course to we are. USC Tulane uh, national championship is this coming Monday, the ninth. At it says seven thirty here, but kickoffs probably like at eight. So Simeon Price, by the way, freshman, six foot. 205 pounds. He ran the ball 30 times for 150 yards and averaged five yards a rush. All I right, Simeon he Price. Plays for Miss- he, under- he plays for Mississippi State. Clearly, yeah. he was probably some sort of backup or something like that. So he's now followed. I will get notifications, and anytime he does something cool, I will let you know on this podcast. Okay, great. Thanks, um, man. You're welcome. It's what I do. Listen, there's not a lot of Simeons out there. we got to stick together, okay? There, there was a... There was a- Micaiah, someone, he was a corner back in the, when uh, Urban Meyer was at Oklahoma or uh, at Ohio State and they were playing Oklahoma. I was like, hey, this guy, this corner, corner's name is Micaiah. So I followed him on Twitter. The immediately next play, he just got absolutely mossed in the end zone by uh, uh, Michael Thomas. Mossed in the end zone and I immediately hit the unfollow button. Unfollow. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so here's the thing. First of all, Tiaj Spears. Yes. Ta- 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 for Tulane. Yeah. For Tulane, the running yes. back. Dear Lord. He's that good, is a isn't he? Grown man. Yeah. Because the dude owned the game. I mean, for okay, so here, here are my takeaways. First of all, Lincoln Riley needs to find a defensive coordinator because his defense is. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was. That's what we said at the beginning of the year. Why did you take Alex Grinch with you? <laughs> He's not good. Because you made Tulane <laughs> look like LSU. He's not good at all. Guys, yes. Tulane did a did a better Michigan offense. Yeah. Minus the arm talent at quarterback. So this was my takeaways. First of all, um, he. Tiaj, Tyj, I'm Ta- sorry. Tyj, I think it's Tajay Spear. Yeah, I think yeah so. okay. Simeon shouldn't pronounce names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, great dude. He's gonna be if he stays healthy and has a has a has a offensive line in front of him. He does great. Second, apparently Tulane was a lot better than I thought they were. They had an offensive line who pushed around, you know, top talent at defensive line, um, and. Led led the way, um, but also USC's defense has been trash all year. 
It's sure. not like they've been great. And I don't mean... Uh, and I don't mean to take going. anything away from get it. Tulane, but... But also... But, no, you're like, right. Tulane, Tulane ran... Tulane got a safety, so, like, come on, dude. Like, They also ran for 305 yards on 34 carries. If, for those of you who can do quick math, that's nine yards a carry. Mm-hmm. Every time they gave the ball off, they were one yard away from a first down. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, their quarterback threw the ball 17 times. Uh, Brendan Rice looked a lot like his dad. He did. He he, he looked very good. Um, he, and, and to be fair, C- Caleb Williams did look good. He threw one really bad interception. Yes, really bad, really poor throw. <laughs> um, and... Other than that, he looked like a pro quarterback. He'll be he'll be coaching. He'll be playing he, in the. I I think. But your people are gonna gawk at him. Like, it's unfortunate because Caleb Williams is just a better running version of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, pa- Patrick Mahomes. What he did so well, and why people gawk at him, is because when you break the pocket, his eyes are always downfield, and then he has the arm strength to flip, flick his wrist and f- flip it forty yards downfield. Right. And Caleb his- Williams does the exact same thing, except then when you when nothing's there, he'll run for fifty yards. Yeah, well, and his talent is Patrick Mahomes' talent is all of his guys know how to play backyard football. Yeah, I mean, correct. remember the the thirteen second drive that they did last year? Oh, or the sure. Thirty second yeah. drive, right? They called their own plays. Yeah. Like yeah, no, so, I, yeah. Good and, for good for Caleb Williams, but he'll Lincoln be the Riley, number one overall pick next year, twenty twenty four. Your defense sucks. <laughs> Find a new one. Um, Tulane, good for you. Pay Spears T Spears. To stick around, or you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to have a steep draw. He might, off. He might be a senior. He, oh, no, a junior. he is a junior. I mean, a he junior. had a great season. Why wouldn't you go to the NFL, man? If uh, I'm going to the NFL, if I'm him, are you kidding me? He's a clear second, third round steal because yeah. he's a kind of a no name. But the way the way he had vision for any everything, and he could cut. He might not be a third three down. Uh, he might not be a three down back, but even he's at least a two down back, and that's where that's what you want. And and he and he's uh, like a bowling ball. You know, people just bounce off of him. Yeah, he, and he bounces low center, off of he, he low has center all gravity. Thing, yeah. He has everything that you want to see in a running back. So, end of the story. Uh, they need a new offensive line. Um, Mario Williams still looked really good. So did Brendan Rice. Um, but they need a new defense, and then USC might be able to beat Ohio State. Start with the defense and, and see where that gets you. Because even, yeah. with, even without the offensive line, safeties you. Yeah. And uh, to be fair, so the, I saw the kickoffs, right? It was a 10-minute highlight compilation. Uh-huh, sure. First of all, whoever was, whoever was commentating that game needed to chill with all the puns they were making on the names. Oh, that was Robert <laughs> Griffin the third. Was that Robert Griffin? Yes, that was true. He does so that he all year. He had a kid one day, and then he went and made puns the next day? Yes. Yes. That's didn't what, he, didn't that's he just yes. have a kid on Saturday? Well, yes. On Saturday, his wife oh. went into labor, so he ran out of the, the live stream of the college football playoff. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, <laughs> get a new defense. Get an offensive line. Also, dude, you're on kickoffs and you muff a kickoff. Just let the thing go through the back of the end zone. Sorry, this is the play. Tulane kicks the ball off. They're down 14. They're down. No, they're down 14 or 15 or whatever the case is. Right. 15. They were down 15. And they let. They kick the ball off. It's a short kickoff. But he makes the return man who calls for the fair catch. He does do his job. Uh-huh. But the return man has to move um, to his, the returner's right. And so because he's moving, he muffs the, 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 he muffs the catch, and it goes out of bounds at the two-yard line. Okay. I don't know what they were trying to do, what was happening. Well, and then, what, on the sa- and then what happened with the safety? I missed the safety. The what two, happened with the Tulane got pressure. A me- no, they tried to run it. They were in the shotgun and tried to run the ball. And um and just the offensive line just decided to lay down and take a nap. I guess oh, because okay. right. the defense was just on just it. 
quarterback sneak it? Like shit on with a how, stick. With, with how much little time was left at the end of the game? Or because run they scored, a slant? Or, or they, yeah, run a slant. <laughs> you or, have Jerry or Rice's run. son and one of the best wide receivers in the game and the best quarterback in the game. Yeah, and, and you decide and to, to that, run it from the shotgun. And to that point, you had thrown for 462 yards. You just, had just throw the ball with, your, with their cornerback, and yeah. you decide to run it from the shotgun. In Lincoln Riley, I feel like, is a lot like Kyle Shanahan, where no matter what is working for you in the game, when, you, when they have a lead late in the game, they just go away from it. Like, going back to the 17 Rose Bowl against mm. Georgia, they mm-hmm. hadn't run for, like, 300 yards, right? I mean, in the first half, they, they were, like, 150. They were just pounding Georgia on the on the ground. And then in the second half, they tried to throw it, and that's how Georgia just kept catching up. Why don't you run it? And then... And then Lincoln and then Lincoln did it again. Like and and in this game, the pass game is working. Then throw the football. Right. You know, like I understand you're trying to waste the clock, but then quarterback sneak it or run some sort and of high great percentage in ta- throw. In throwing the ball in short yarded situations. Yeah. yeah, so just three of their touchdowns were th- touchdown throws in short yarded situations. Right. Or uh, two of their touchdowns, sorry. So, so like yeah. uh, 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 Again, your Stop identity being stupid. Your, your identity takes us back to the Michigan game, right? Your identity is one thing. Just do that. Live and die with your identity and then move on. All right. I'm done with that. Uh, you want to go to the natty real quick? Okay. And ladies and okay. gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> Comfortable? So, I am. Because I don't want to talk about this, I have moved on emotionally from. College okay, well football. then just let me then just shut up and let me do it. No, no, because I have to participate. Or you know, why am I doing this podcast? Then you know, I I ask myself that every time. So TC, say, <laughs> TCU is getting twelve, 12 and a half and a half points. Yeah, against Georgia, who according to ESPN's analytics, are seventy two point nine percent chance of winning. This is really going to be a question to me of how good is Max Duggan's yeah. led offense? A hundred percent. This is everyone and their mother is going to be picking Georgia, right? Because of how they performed against Ohio State, they're already talking about getting better. Uh, Kirby Smart, the first thing he said was, we got to clean all this stuff up. So this team is going to be ready to go. TCU, are they going to be happy to be there or are they going to be trying to win it? Right. My guess is they're going there. They're going to try to win it. Now, Darnell Washington, the tight end for Georgia, he's probably out. But uh, Kendra Miller, the running back for uh, TCU, is probably also out. So DeMarcado, the backup, uh, who ran for 150 on Michigan, will probably have to play. If you are Sonny Dykes, you have to beat Georgia throwing the football because Georgia's not going to let you run. They didn't really let Ohio State run in their in the semifinal, so you have to use Quentin Quentin Johnston and those wide receivers and Max Duggan and his quarterback run ability to win this football game. Uh, Ohio State ran the ball thirty two times for one hundred nineteen yards. Three, that's 3.7 yards a carry. That's a bet about as best as you can hope for against Georgia. So just go in and be yourself. Throw the heck out of this thing. Let Max Duggan cook. He's the nation's best quarterback and go for it. And this needs to be a bounce back game for Max Duggan if they stand any chance because he was not good against Michigan. He had a few long kind of throws. And uh, especially that one on third and seven to Quinson Johnson for 75 yards. Other than that, he wasn't impressive. He also had two interceptions. So, Georgia, clean it up. And that's all Georgia has to do, right? Stetson Bennett, he's going to be cool, calm, and collected. They're going to run the football uh, against Ohio State. They ran 26 times for 135 yards, 5.2 yards a carry. Would have run for more, except Georgia was had to throw the ball. And Stetson Bennett was 23 of 34 for 398, three touchdowns. It, it, I, I think it's going to be a good game. Georgia to win. TCU plus the 12 and a half, though. And that's it. Why is this game on Monday? Like, I know it's why always this a, game was on Monday. But, like... Because the NFL is going to be on a Saturday. I know that that's why, but I think that's stupid. I, I do, too, but also... Even more all, reason why the NCAA is going to beat the NFL their own game. 
I guess we'll have to see, won't we? Either that or you guys need to do a promotion and relegation sort of deal where we like the Cleveland Browns get shoved down to the NCAA and like Georgia and TCU get to go up. Well, and that only works if they do your little separate college from the athletic department thing. Well, I still think they're gonna, that's what they're going to do. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, Micaiah. Who knows anymore? We're going we're gonna to th- see the Coach Carey sell later. Ooh. We're going to see. The NFL well, we're, one's going to be very interesting. Well, we'll cover a little bit of other sports, I'm sure. Don't tell me what to do. Soccer. Um, yeah, and of course we're going to preview soccer. and see see what other what people need to do this next season coming up. Who, on... Who's your natty pick? Uh, Georgia. <laughs> uh, plus <laughs> or minus the points? Uh, minus the points. So you think they blow TCU out? Oh no, plus the points. I'm sorry. It would be easier for me to say TCU minus the points. I don't know why that's easier for me to say. No, TCU plus the points, but okay. not. It's Georgia's going to win. They're not going to win outright. Right. That one. Okay, great. <laughs> great. I get it. Yeah. And then that'll kind of, and then we'll do our kind of final takeaways of the season. Great season, though. College football playoff, first time in it since uh, forever. That, uh, first time in its history that both semifinal games were probably in the top five on games of the year. Uh, they were just both excellent. That uh, Ohio State Georgia game is probably number one. Alabama Tennessee close number two though. Well, you know what that means. It's the fourth and one podcast. I've been fancy trash. Uh, I've have, I have been fancy trash. Man. That's been Captain Boring. We'll see you guys next week. Enjoy your college football national. Show. Wash your hands. You failed the animals. I swear. I'm or not, you know, die. Bye. Bye.